Hey, what's up, everybody? Double G here with my buddy Larry Caution, and we're going to talk some MTV The Challenge Season 37. And Larry is my reality TV go to <laughs> guy. If I have any questions, if we're talking Big Brother, if we're talking Challenge, if we're talking anything like you, you even watch some shows that uh, I kind of catch in the background because my wife is watching them. Uh, <laughs> Married at First Sight. I see you sometimes tweet about that like every once in a while. So you're the guru, man. Look, what's going on, Garrett? I am very happy to be here today. I'm a reality TV guy. That's what I do. Um, I, everybody know I love pro wrestling, but that spun my reality TV oh, yeah. based uh, enthusiasm, the real world, all that kind of stuff. So I'm glad to be here today with you. So uh, if, if I could say thank you, first of all, for having me, because I think the fight game, people think, oh, it's just sports. No, 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 no. Garrett covers it all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, so, OK, so I guess my first question is, do you even remember what's the first season of the challenge that you followed weekly? Hmm. Weekly, uh, it would had to have been with the Miz on it, uh, Mike wow. Mizanic. Yeah, it was. It was clearly a long time ago. Because remember, at first they were like little spots during the spring break. Right. During the spring break, they would have like spots in the commercials, and they would do the challenges and things of that nature. The road rules was really the more competition based reality show where we got to learn Darrell and different people like that. And then it spun into the challenge a little later. But I think it would have had to have been the gauntlet or something like that. I, I really can't pinpoint it right now. So, so we're so so we're talking like 2004 time. Frame. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, this is even before our guy TJ comes into oh, yeah. the picture as, as the main host. So I'm I don't go. I'm probably close, but the, see, the thing about me is I was so inconsistent with my watching because I could never figure out uh, when it was on. And, and I would always see them sort of as reruns and go, oh, man, like this challenge is on. Like, when is it on? And then I'd realize, mm -hmm. like, these were actually second airings. And so, yeah. I, I, so I remember some of that stuff. I don't think I would have it would have been appointment TV to me mm -hmm. until about like probably uh like inferno three time frame Ooh. that's when i was like okay now i'm gonna try to watch every episode um mm -hmm. gauntlet three like right around that time frame so you go back you go way back i don't yeah. go back quite as as far back but i know i'm i'm I, i'm not gonna say i know i'm guessing you've actually even gone back and, oh, and yeah. rewatches on this stuff oh definitely as soon as uh all the episodes hit paramount plus i went back and started from the earliest episode they had on there. But be even before that, you can find episodes on YouTube or, um, you know, the uh, European site that does a similar thing that you can go and find. Daily Motion, you can find yeah. episodes on there as well. So, yeah, 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 I go way back. I will have to admit here, though, that the – so up until the Double Agent season, I had missed the previous three seasons because I was sort of in flux and I didn't have the direct TV and – hulu live which is now my main uh my main streaming i think they now have mtv so i should be yeah. fine last or for the last season i had to buy the whole thing on itunes and so Whoa. i wouldn't get it until the next morning but i think mtv is on hulu live now so i think i'll be good with this season but i'm actually going back because i missed war of the worlds which i have recently bought on itunes and rewatched. i'm in the midst of war of the worlds too and then i got to catch up with total madness i hope to be caught up Sort of as we get in the stretch run with this new season. But, yeah, I, I, I'm in a challenge mode myself right now. See, these last few seasons, they've been doing more international players, right. bringing people from other reality shows internationally. So um, the problem with the challenge, and I'm sure we'll get into it eventually, is after a while, people get their own following. And if the producers feel like you have to have certain people on there all the time because the show has gotten its popularity off of certain people. But eventually, some of those people age out. You know what yeah. I mean? They, they simply just can't keep up. So then we just got the challenge All Stars last year. Yes. I mean, early, earlier this year. And There's I do have to finish that one too. That that is that is one of my my ones that I I've kind of I've started a few episodes and 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 I still need to catch up. But 
Um, no, you're hundred percent right. And we're going to get to this. Cause I, I know that you have your own ideas on how they could continue to evolve and improve the show. And I do want to get that from you. So, uh, we're we're going to go down memory lane a little bit here. I'm going to show you a photo and some of these photos are old so they're like screen caps of screen caps so they 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 might be a little blurry but as we go up they'll, they'll get a little clearer here. And I want you to just give me the the thought that comes to your mind when you see this photo. They're they're all sort of memorable. People who watch the challenge will will definitely recognize these photos. But let's go for number 1 here. Ah, she's trying to kill me. <laughs> she's trying to kill me. That was when Veronica was co- going across the tight line, and I believe it was. Jo- oh my goodness! Oh goodness! Jody, Jody was clamped onto her or Tanya. It was one or the other. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now and trying to undo her pin, like because you had to go across the uh, the um, zip line. Yep. And you're trying to fight each other, and you technically you can kick, you can do all that kind of stuff. She tried to unsnap her, her, <laughs> her safety harness. One of the most classic. And you can hear Mike like, she's trying to kill her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I love that. I love that. Now that's classic challenge. Yeah. That's classic. Okay, so this is this is a little bit of a feel-good moment here. Oh, uh, that's when Dim she uh um was diagnosed with cancer before the season. Um, you know. She uh, eventually she did uh pass away due to cancer after yeah. not long after filming one of the seasons, but uh that was the first time she felt comfortable enough to take off her cap, her um, swim cap before a challenge. And um CT encouraged her to do that. Heck of a story, heck of a story. What do you think about that whole thing? Because their relationship wasn't always the rosiest. And and on you know, in these games, they're they're dialing up their energy and they're often probably doing things that they would not normally do in real life if they weren't on TV but they're also in reality TV the smart producers are putting things in place so that they do get this expression but i remember seeing that and going like wow you know CT and DM that's a special moment but there was a lot of people like oh CT didn't always treat her great like what was your whole take on that situation well see at the time I'm going to be completely honest because I did watch it in the real time CT was a villain you know what I mean yeah. if you remember he just came off with a whole fight with Adam he was a real scumbag like punched Adam in his face he, even on his original real world series um, in, in Paris he was kind of a, you know the bad boy outside of type even that season, he was playing different girls the season before. He said, I'm going to use these girls to my advantage. So you hear all these quotes in his confessionals. And then all of a sudden, remember, Diem was with Derek. That was her original relationship. And then they never even touched on it. That was always strange to me. Derek was there the next season. Diem was there. They never touched on why they weren't together no more. And then CT starting to get with him. So I think that was the underlying reason that they never touched on on the show. A lot of people were friends with Derek. And didn't like that CT was kind of getting in there and trying to play DM. And they knew her physical, you know, her health issues. And I can I can understand from a cast perspective outside looking in. But I do think over time, the relationship became genuine. At first, it might have been ulterior motives yeah. because DM had a lot of friends on the jury. I mean, you know, if you really think about it, the, the way that game worked was the females picked to save the guy. The guy picked to save the female. So you... The only way you were going to stay safe is somebody from the opposite sex had to pick you to keep you safe for that particular week. So it behooves CT to find a female, a woman on up, you know, who would pick him every week to keep right. him out of the bottom too. So that's why it was looked at strategically back then. By the way, uh, when Adam was on the Real World, I got a lot of people to believe that he was actually Lionel Richie's son. <laughs> Wow, 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 I see it. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, because wow. his, his pops was in the Commodores, right? Adam's yep. pops was in the Commodores. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I would just make that joke. Oh, he's got to be Lionel Richie's son. <laughs> um, okay, H- here's another one. Very memorable. Oh, man. One of the greatest eliminations in challenge history. Now, a little backstory Johnny Bananas was a nobody. Let's call it what it is. Yep. He was on he was on the real world, Austin. I mean, uh, not Austin. He was in um, I think one of one of Texas, whatever. Key, I he, thought it was like Key West or something. Key West, yeah. Because remember the Key West crew came in and he got eliminated the first day, his first season. He was nothing. Johnny started winning when the challenge was completely different. 
and it was a team win. Remember, the first few years of the challenge, you didn't have the individual winners at the end. It was large, a large number of people win. Johnny latched on to Kenny. He latched on to Evan, and he started winning. He started pulling all these tricks trying to make himself a star. He got, like, the, the perfect people. He thought he had the perfect game in place, and this one challenge. <laughs> They bring in some mercenaries, <laughs> and one of them was CT. CT came in there, and you had to you had to lock up in the back to back, and then fight to hit the uh the opposite end to take take your opponent to the opposite end. Well, the CT, barrel. yeah, yeah, the, the barrel run over the barrel. CT took this man and walked him like a dog, put him on his back like a baby, and then dropped him into the barrel. One of the greatest scenes of all time. I don't think it can be touched, really. I mean, no, it's got to be like. The best moment in challenge history on any countdown list. Best elimination, period. Uh, wow. Icon iconic. Iconic. So his Key West season of the real world, there's a woman uh, who's from San Jose. So that's where, I, that's where I grew up. Her name was Janelle. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah, her. yeah, yeah. She was, she was on there, wasn't she? So she, uh, she was dating... Uh, so I played uh, semi-pro baseball for years and years and years, and she was dating one of the players who we played against. And so I was like, oh, I wonder if she'll ever, I wonder if she'll come out to one of the games. She comes out to one of the games. I made sure to go over and walk over her and, and tell her, you know, how, how, how I, that I'm a fan and I watched her season and stuff. So attractive, like beautiful, beautiful, and, exotic, oh my god, real, real like Just, real, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like, cause like you see them on TV and you think, wow, you know, they're really, they're they're looking their best. Like that's what sure. you should do when you're on TV. And so she was definitely wanting to look her best, even though it was like a hundred degrees outside, and you know, she was probably her, you know, she was probably feeling a little bit too made up because it probably wasn't super comfortable. But I I swear she was so attractive. So Janelle. Big ups to Janelle, big fan. <laughs> I wonder. I, I I saw something with her recently. It's probably like on Reddit or something. Mm. Um, but I kind of always always wondered about her because I don't think she did too many challenges, right? She did one. I, I believe she did pretty well too. And I was shocked she didn't come back. She was one of those like earlier on ones. It was a team type of deal. Yeah, she did all right. All right, I got two more for you. Ah. Oh. This hurts. This hurts bad. <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to show this guy's face, so we only could show his backside. Yeah, that's a whole story to that as well. Um, so I'm a big West fan. Let's put it out there now. Um, Wes is my guy. I, he's he's the he. If like uh, if he, anybody from the challenge ever wanted to go into pro wrestling and be the, <laughs> and to be the greatest heel in the history of wrestling, it would be Wes. But anyway. The other thing about Wes is I think he could actually do a lot of these other reality series type of games, like these strategy games. If he did, if people didn't know him as Wes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, feel yeah. like he, I he feel like he could, do, he could do really well in Big Brother. He would win that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Wes and and, and Kenny had a few. It started over. Uh, um, Wes's ex girlfriend Johanna um, started messing with Kenny on a season where Wes wasn't there, so they had a rivalry. So. Eventually, they come together as rivals, I think, two. Might have been rivals one. Um, so they were teamed up. Can't stand each other. The whole season, Wes is doing way better than Kenny in the challenges. Carrying them. I mean, Kenny's just losing his mojo. It became a storyline like Kenny has lost his mojo. Well, Wes, he was just clowning them the whole time. But they make it all the way to the finals together. <laughs> And of all things, all season, Wes has been carrying him. And then that picture tells it just what happened. Wes body gave out on him. Ah, ah, he was crying. Oh, the screaming. I can still hear that <laughs> screaming in my head. And Kenny had to try to carry him to the end. <sighs> Bad look for Wes. Bad look. But it was hilarious, though. That was, well, he, that, was, that was peak challenge for me. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, he will, he will talk about that moment a lot. Like when he's trying to mentor – these youngsters, these rookies going into the final, he'll say, look, you want to be ready for this final because if you are not ready, they will put you failing and make it a big story. And then social media is coming after you. And I'm assuming that's the one that he references when, okay. when he's talking oh, about that. Definitely. And it's happened to just about everybody. CT had his moment. 
bananas had it. I mean, everyone has gone through that. You know what I mean? Like, if you do enough of these challenges, you're going to fail. But oh, yeah. that one, like the Johnny Bananas and CT moment, and that moment right there, you can always replay them and people like <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one. Very infamous moment here. Because of this moment, I don't think one of these people has ever been back on this. Uh, the anniversary was this past week. The anniversary of this moment where the five, these two were rivals, okay? Season prior, John um, Sarah was teamed up with uh, Jordan, and, you know, these two made it all the way to the final. Sarah and Jordan had an opportunity to either save Johnny and uh, Nani or send them into elimination. Sarah made the call, sent Johnny into elimination. He gets beat. Johnny takes it personal, like he hasn't done that to a million people before. Anyway, they come back, the next rivals, they, they're teammates now, Sarah and Johnny. They make it all the way to the end. And TJ tells him, because Johnny got there first, he has a decision to make. He can either take, split the money with Sarah, 50-50, or take all the money. And Johnny said, I'm going to take the money and run. <laughs> He had the built-in excuse from the previous season too, but uh, yeah, they had they had men defenses though. They Sarah yep. thought they it was good. They cried together. They hugged. They pulled be good friends again. And Johnny was just waiting in the grass. You know what? I, I was always I was always thinking like, okay, that was just for TV. MTV's pinching Sarah some off in the side. No, that did not happen. She, she has never been up, back. She ended up with nothing. That that yeah that that's a very mem. It, a Ashley did it as well. Yes. Uh, um. So it, it's happened a couple times. I don't. I don't. Uh, that that whole thing where the the partner has to choose where the other partner gets like I feel uncomfortable in those moments. Like you can just feel like oh no. Like that's what makes these. Uh, you know these guys are so smart when they put these shows together. And I think that's what the players are feeling like. They don't feel like it was dirty. I mean, yeah, the players going to do what they're going to do, but it's the producers. You set this up to even be an option. It makes me feel like I worked all this time. I got all the way to the end and then you pull a move like that. If you know going in that the person has an option to do that, you're going to move a little different. But to just spring it on it make they make them feel like, "Oh no, you didn't have this idea." You came up with this the idea now because it's convenient, and now you're gonna make it like this was a story all along. That's what I've heard. Some of the conspiracies that Sarah had that they never announced this to the uh, to, to the challenges. They figured they 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 love Johnny, and they was going to do this for like TV moment. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it, it worked, <laughs> but it's bad, man. Sarah was like a real big part of the challenge up until that point, and she never been back. Uh, okay, so. Let's talk about the evolution of this show because you've dropped the classic challenge a couple of different times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when when they had the real world, when they had the road rules and then they would do fresh meat, you had a constant influx of, of new personalities, of new talent. They haven't done a real world season in, in quite a long time. Uh, they're kind of I guess they're going to start doing some more stuff with Paramount Plus with the real mm -hmm. world and the road rules. So maybe there's going to be an influx of talent, though, being on a streaming service, it, they're not going to have the same eyeballs as they, as they would have had because we saw a lot of these folks come through the real world. And then once the challenge became famous or became, uh, you know, just as, as big as the real world, our eyes were obviously like, OK, that person's going to be great for the challenge. I can't wait for them to be on the challenge. They don't have that anymore. So they're poaching a lot of folks from different seasons. They call them the rookies. What do you think about this evolution of, you know, I don't know how long it's been, past five years or whatever. And also the second part of that question. So that's question one. Question two is you watch so much. So you have your eyeballs on a lot of possible reality show folks. And I know this is a network. It's a reality show network. You get in one, you may be going to get in another. Do you have some folks who you would like to see them bring on from different shows as well? Oh, definitely, definitely. See, I think that the old channel is like you say, it was strictly real world road rules because it was a MTV production. You know what I mean? And, and everything was strictly MTV. Then eventually VH1 started dipping their toe into the reality space. So you had, remember, at one point, MTV had the real world and road rules, and then VH1 had your um, 
Flavor Flav shows and your I Love Money. That was their version of the challenge because they would take people from Rock of Love and um, with uh, Brett Michaels and put all these unique, funny people on a, a show. And that show only got canceled because one of the people got killed or something like that. So anyway... It just became a, a hodgepodge of man, there's a lot of reality show personalities out there who are famous people, some you know, C level celebrities who have a following. Why not put them on the road rules? I mean the, the challenge. So the challenge started first was are you are are you the one? Are you the one is an MTV show where they trying to find love, but it was just way more than that. It was funny. Hilarious, you had these personalities. So you started poaching, then they started taking once the connection between uh CBS and MTV came into play so you can get people from Survivor, get people from Big Brother. Ooh, now the, 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 the possibilities are limitless. So when you say, are there people I would like to see? Of course, because there's so many people from Survivor that were cast who were more personality based and not necessarily just out there for the experience of camping and, and going to play in games in the jungle. Those people were there to be on TV. You know what I mean? Anybody who's going to make good TV but also has a level of athleticism and can have fun and do some of these athletic challenges, they are perfect people for the challenge. And we've seen some of those people who have become some of the best players to play the game, really. Because Jordan, Jordan, people don't know this, he actually was cast to play in Survivor first. And we had, um, you know, with his his story and all his backstory, they put him on the real world because they felt like it could flesh out his story, put him, you know, and then eventually he, his goal was to always get on a challenge. A lot of these people even signed up for the real world because they eventually wanted to be on the challenge. It was like right. a, step, a stepping stone. That's the same thing now. You hear it on Big Brother because I watch the live feeds all the time. Yeah, my real goal is to get to the challenge. They don't wow. care. Yeah, yeah. They, the guy Christian right now who's uh -huh. in the current, current season, he was cast for Survivor. He'd be and they, great. He was like, hey, man, I mean, I, I didn't even sign up for this. They put me on here to, that I wanted to get to the challenge. You know what I mean? So, yes, you know, it's a natural stepping stone. The right. same with Love, Love, Love Island. They just pull people. You know what I mean? So all of these shows, eventually, anybody with a sense of athleticism, they got a personality, have a good look, good look to them, they're going to make it to MTV. That's the bottom line. There's a guy on this season of the challenge mm -hmm. from the Netflix reality show, too hot to handle. I love too hot to handle my guy. Kells. Oh, my man. Who's a, he's a, just a jacked up tall athletic looking, you know, a lot of times these, these big buff guys come on the challenge and they can't do the cardio. Flame stuff out. They yep. flame out. But they're even going to, to this Netflix show with, with, with Kells. How does the, um, the production companies like uh, like like if you ha like let's say you have a, a reality show on Fox Fox isn't paramount mm -hmm. it, uh, can can those talents are they signed to you know how, how does that how does that work I should actually I have a I have a good friend who um, casts for uh, I think she casted uh, the circle okay. and she casted for I don't know. I don't know if she did Love is Blind or not, but I should ask her how that works, because that would actually influence who I think should be on some of these shows. I think it might have like a time period on it. Like I know Kells was on season one. Yeah. Um. So th that might be up by now be due, to, due to the cycle or how long he have to do with the contract. But I know that's happened in the past because at one point you couldn't do a CBS show and then do MTV show. But then when the partnership happened with Netflix, maybe it's a thing about being on network TV opposed to being on streaming. So that might be the, the loophole. But I, I mean, it's the endless possibilities. You know, they find the form, the formula is all the same. You yeah. know what I mean? And then they just find the people. It's, they're using a lot of the same casting nets. So we'll get to who the best is, in your opinion, in a, in, in a little bit. But who is your favorite? favorite like if you had to pick I, I mean maybe you already said it but i want uh you already mentioned wes man and woman if you if you had to watch a challenge season you go you know what this is the person who i want to be on it first and foremost no matter what if i had to watch a challenge season i mean i, I did say it. it's wes wes has to be on the season for me to be engaged you know what i mean good or bad and of course, I would love for him to last more than two weeks. You know what I mean? Like, but the thing about Wes is 
And I, I, I know people get tired of, oh, he do the same thing. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Wes always tries to integrate himself with the underdogs. If you look at it, Johnny always tries to stack his team. You know what I mean? He knows who's going to be there. You get Leroy. You get certain guys who always going to be protecting him. He get his army, and he hides behind his army. He's going to take the bullet. Anybody going to shoot? It's going to be him. But he has enough soldiers a lot of the time who will – Stack, go to bat for him. Wes will have a small army, and he'll go and recruit. I like to see the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. I like to see the army getting built. I don't want to feel like I tune in the show and people already have built their relationships from the last season or the season before these. So it's a foregone conclusion. I want to be surprised. Well, he <laughs> he even mentioned, I think it's in War of the Worlds too, that he started that recruitment process like before, like way before they even started the show. And he was he 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 called it being in everybody's DMs. He was, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, in their yeah. DMs. So, but do you think that because like the, here's the amazing thing to me, Johnny, CT, they've won multiple times. I think Wes has won three times. You would think, and and this wouldn't work. The show wouldn't work if all of these rock star folks got kicked out early. Why do they not get kicked out early by these other groups? Like, what is like? How do they stick around for so long? Well, if you look at Challenge history, they try. You know what I mean? <laughs> Johnny's been on twenty four seasons, probably. You know what I mean? Like, he's won seven times. So, yeah, there's a lot of seasons he didn't win. I mean, the same with Wes. Wes has only won technically two challenges. His third win. Was a, like a uh, like a all trans versus pros or something like that. Got it wasn't, it, got it, got it. wasn't an official challenge season. He's gotten to the final multiple times, but then the point is he's the leader in elimination wins as well. So you can put him in elimination. You can try to get him out. Doesn't mean you're going to beat him head up. Because who's going to really be the guy to be like, okay, I'll put my game on the line to go down in elimination and try to eliminate one of the best ever. That's the that's. But if you go down that elimination one on one with West, who's had the most elimination wins in challenge history, odds are you're probably going home. You know what I mean? Same with CT. Who's really going to put that neck on the line to be like, oh, that big guy CT? I might get a hall brawl with him. I might get something that's not in my favor, and I'm going home. And it's happened multiple times. So I get it from that perspective. The thing is, you have to have the the good rookies in there that you don't mind throwing to the wolves. If you get some big strapping young lad who comes in there thinking he's the, the next, the best thing, slice bread, <laughs> you know, throw him in there. And, and there you go. But what's happened the last few seasons is, especially with the European invasion, they've come in with a crew. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they like, we ain't going nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so the, the Americans kind of have been the underdogs a lot of the time. So it's really thrown a, a good little mix into the game that has been quite enjoyable. All right. Favorite woman. Favorite woman, if I really had to narrow it down, she doesn't challenge any longer, is Jody. Um, I love Jody. Jody was strong, smart. She always was teamed with Alton. They were good. I also liked, um, I, I'm not a fan of Anissa. Carl Maria, I was a fan of Carl Maria. Yeah, well, she, was, she was the underdog at one Exactly. Time. Now she's the big bad bully. You know what I mean? I hate throwing that word around, but I think her and Paulie, their relationship is kind of tainted her a little bit. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, honestly, like it's so hard because the women, a lot of times, and I, I know we could probably have a lot of lo lovely ladies watching this right now, but a lot of times on the challenge, they like to latch on to whatever Johnny wants to do or whatever with this guy. I want a, a female, a, fe a woman, excuse me. To come on the show and be like, I'm going to play my game. And people like, you know, um, uh, what's her name? Um, you know, we were just talking about it the other Laurel. day. Laurel used to be like that. But then she'll fall in love with somebody and then she'll just, <laughs> the same thing. I'm like, stand on your own too. Like Bear, like, Bear of all people. She falls in love with Bear. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> man. Remember, she was in love with CT at one point. She was, I mean, she all so she was in love with Nicole at one point. Yep, yep. She always just, I'm like, she's so crazy for love. I'm like, that distracts her from the game. I miss the old days when you had yeah. talk, uh, people with their own mind, like Rachel. Remember Rachel? And Rachel, like, she was going to fight hard for herself. Those are the type of players. I miss the old school ladies of the game. Okay, I'll quickly give my two faves. So you had mentioned sort of this evolution of CT. I always got a kick out of CT, even when he was a 
giant dick. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just got a kick out of him because I didn't, know, I didn't know anybody like CT. Like CT would never have been in my friend circle, and so just to watch him, watch him work, I was like, my, this guy's like an alien to me. But then he made the baby face turn, and now he's like, he, 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 he's not the same dude, and he's changed his strategy, and he's evolved, and damn you know, that yeah well we'll see we'll see what this this bod looks like this this season he may have got some of the good stuff um f- women for me uh emily schramm was my favorite i like, emily. I like was emily. my favorite and and i'm gonna we'll we'll dovetail into this conversation in in a little bit because i do have a question of you know who 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 could have been you know the 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 top dog, but for whatever reason, just decided not to play as much. So I, I do want to get into that conversation. You know what? Why, why don't we just go, we'll always take that conversation next, which is, in your opinion, someone who may have done the challenge every once in a while, or they went away, or for whatever reason they just decided not to do the challenge. I feel like Emily probably could have set the a record that would be unreachable for uh for women if she would have played but i think she's only played like three times and she's uh she, i think she's got like a, maybe she has a champs versus stars or whatever yeah. title but she is so uh she's so strong she's such a great athlete she's mm-hmm. smart she, I, in the real world house she did get caught up and that almost turned crazy but she seems to be very good at separating a lot of the stuff and she may be the closest thing to the person who's just like i just want to win that that's all that matters to me she would be the one for the women um but who do you think you know was kind of like maybe they didn't they only played once or twice but they could have really been a stalwart in this game um to be honest with you that's a great pick um because i remember emily Early on, I think she was coming off. Uh, I think she was on Real World DC. Um, yes, and uh, she she had that thing with uh, her, her ex boyfriend. Uh, what's his name? Ty. Remember yes. they they, yes. they used to argue all the time, and he was a huge distraction for her. Yes. And I think every season she was on, I think he was on there as well, basically. But he was a flame out. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, he was. Um, he was one of those guys who, mm-hmm. you know, looked great, looked the part, but no, nope. did, yeah, did not have the the cardio or really the men- the the like the emotional gameplay that it took. Exactly, the emotion and I think that was a, dist- a bad distraction for her early on, but she did overcome it and she was a heck of a competitor. Her problem was she was so wrapped up with Paula and Paula had great cardio and career was good as far as that, but the politics again Johnny Dunbar, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> they it's so wrapped up in everything else. But I, I do like Emily as a pick. Another person that I think kind of along those lines, like you say, didn't play as many seasons as they probably could have and, and been better at. What what kind of I mean, I don't know, because I, I would say Jody. Jody didn't play as long as she could have. She played more of the earlier team challenges. Once it got more to individual, she kind of went away. And because Robin stayed overstayed her welcome, um, but those those years to me, they had some strong women who, if they would have stuck with it to where the point where it got to where Cara Maria was like the dominant woman or something like that, they could have took her. You know what I mean? I, I really think so. But because the format of the challenge evolved, some of those people like either got disinterested in the show. Or because some people were kicked off and they were friends with them, they decided to just leave MTV altogether and kind of boycott the franchise, that type of deal. That's why a lot of people left the show. Another person I'm going to throw out from the guy's side, he only played three times. uh, And I think he would just get too upset at this game. But Frank, you remember Frank. Frank was a beast. He's a good, he's a really, really good player. And, you know, he, he would fly out the handle at the you know for whatever reason get really angry but as a player i thought he was really good and if he could have stuck with it i don't know if he would have been in the upper echelon but uh but i think he could have did well uh okay so now who's who's next like who's the the next person both men and women who you think will kind of be in 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 the conversation of uh, of best folks like i i think jordan is really good i don't know if people consider him at that level i think they should because he should, he, should. He, he's really good athlete 
Um, you know, we, we've we've talked about we've talked about Kara and Laurel, but out of the newer folks, who kind of joins that group? You think in the next couple years? Well, see, I think a lot of the challenge is about politics. You know what I mean? And you can you can be a great athlete, you can be very good at challenges, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a, a crew. You know what I mean? And we've learned that. We've seen it. It's not like it's a one-time thing. If they don't have the good, good position within the community of who's coming in, who's going to protect you, um, Killer Cam has that now. You know what I mean? She kind of she doesn't have Leroy anymore. He's retired. Cam is going to be like the next big woman who kind of runs the show. And Carl I saw her on Instagram last week, kind of anoint her. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, and I get it. It's all po- political. You yeah. got to look at it like that. These are the people who are coming in, who are going to work with you, who are going to be the ones because they are influenced. You got to remember, a lot of these people from Survivor, a lot of these people from Big Brother watch the challenge yep. and they know who is who's doing what. So they come in with notions like, OK, that's the big job. That's the person I want to come at. If Johnny's not going to be there, who's the next person then that I have to look at as the OG, as the person that everybody's going to be like at one point, Zach could have been like the best thing that ever happened to the challenge, but his emotional and mental wasn't there. Somebody like Cam, I think she'll keep it together. As far as on the men's side, it's tough because you have so many people, but Pauly, Pauly from Big Brother is very good at challenges. Mm -hmm. He has relationships because you got all these people coming from Big Brother and Josh and all these people who, you know, even if they don't necessarily get along outside the house all the time, you have that bond that will bring you together. And the Big Brother Alliance, especially because I know you haven't gotten to it yet, you'll see. You know what I mean? They've kind of like taken over the game. You I, know? Got a, I got a Big Brother Alliance question for you coming. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that that's kind of where it's going. If you really look at who's being casted for the show, who's doing well in these challenges with Fessy and all, that is coming. You know what I mean? So you got to look out for that. Okay, I got I, See, I already had anointed Killer Cam, so she's not even on my list of who's, who's <laughs> going to be next. Because she's, she's, I mean, I think she's the best player to, to come along in, in, in quite a while. Overall, well-rounded player. Um, I, I, on the men's side, I like Turbo. I think Turbo, Turbo, Turbo is a beast, but he also uses his... Intimidation. Um, well, but his culture in, in, in the right way. People okay. like him. He is a likable person. He says some things that don't really make sense to <laughs> Americans, but they're just his ideals and, and yeah. how he was raised. And and they're kind of like disarming in a way. So people kind of they, they go like, okay, you know, even though Turbo just said he's gonna eat my eat my face off, the way that he said it, ah, he's just kind of kidding. And I think he uses that to his advantage. Well, I, I don't know. Um, um, I know, Garrett, you start off the show by saying how far you've gone. Right, right. I still have two seasons that I haven't <laughs> seen of Turbo, so that may yeah. change. Keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> all right, somebody, all right. somebody, somebody got tired of Turbo. Let's okay. put it that way. <laughs> okay, so um, who is I had I had a second I had a, a woman, uh, and and now I just lost my train of thought on on who that woman was. Uh, let, let, I'll, I'll think about it. Oh, no, no. Now I know who it is. My favorite player on the woman's side of, of the new crew of a big brother fraternity or sorority is Casey. I think Casey is cool. So good at keeping her composure. Um, you know, the, she, she is great. She's a great athlete. I just saw her doing some boxing the other day yeah did she did she win her fight she won her fight right she won she won it was good did you watch that whole show no i didn't watch it i don't watch any of it but i was watching her instagram and they were showing her hitting the mitts okay I was, like, I was like wow like she hits the mitts better than josh hits the mitts for sure like, josh she- got smoke <laughs> <He did. laughs> um but f- uh did fessy win his fight too Oh, Fessy looked good. Oh yeah. my goodness. He was okay. impressive. He was okay. impressive. Okay. Because he he he's that guy who we're not sure if he can take it to the next level, but he's like he's got the total package, right? I don't know. <laughs> can, but can he 
take it to the next level because yeah, so that that's that's a big part of it. But he's got smart people who he's aligned with who should be able to enlighten him a bit. But uh, but yeah, we, I mean that that was maybe my favorite thing about the double agent season was you had Fessy who believes he is the next guy, and you had CT who's like maybe, but this is but I'm still here. You cannot overlook me, and Fessy overlooked him. And then you know they had their little their, their little toe to toe thing, and 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 CT ends up winning the whole thing. So I think this, I think that's a lesson there for for young for young Fessy. I think so too, and, and that's why I say I, you you can't really look at a person's first or even that second season and yeah. determine that that's going to be nobody. Everybody can't be Wes. If you really look at it, look at Johnny. Johnny has won seven times. I think he went home like early like his first three times you know what i mean like so fessy he has to get smarter he has to look at okay this is what has been successful i can't just be cocky fessy going out there thinking i'm the man every time i go out there and think that's going to get me what where i want to go you have to adapt you have to make relationships you have to go outside what you are comfortable with doing if you want to be successful long term on this game that's just the way it is all right so the next topic here um, I want you to give me your top three on each side. Um, who are the goats of the challenge in history? Top three. Give me your one, two, and three for men and women. If I'm going to be completely honest, I mean, I got to give it to Johnny Bananas, number one. You have to. I mean, it is what it is. Um, CT, number two. CT has had a level of consistency even though he hasn't been on every challenge, he's been on a lot of challenges. Oh yeah, and, and, and he's made quite a comeback since his div uh, divorce, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. divorced. He rededicated himself to the game and really has gotten his body, you know, up and down. But last couple seasons, and, and the key to CT's game is, and why I give him a lot of respect. CT never had to be Johnny. He never had to be Wes. He never had to be conniving. He never had to be that sneaky. He never had to get this large alliance to boost him up. He just relied on his absolute skill. His absolute, like, you know, I'm I'm CT. You know what I mean? It's an intimidation factor where some people haven't even challenged him because they know if we don't get him out early, it's going to be hard to get him out late. <laughs> and, and number three is tough because, honestly, I like to give Kenny some credit. You know what I mean? Um, I know that's a – a kind of taboo thing within the community. So I'll put Kenny off to the side as an asterisk. Evan and Kenny, you know, they both were great challenges. And they ran this game for years, man. If it wasn't for Kenny and Evan, Johnny would be nothing. That's what we call it. If I'm going to call Johnny number one, you got you can't not acknowledge Kenny and Evan. And, and we know it was some controversy. Maybe you want to touch on maybe not. But that's why they were, aren't really considered in the community any longer. But if I'm going to go down a step further, you had to go with Darrell just for the like Darrell sustained. He's won a lot. I know a lot of those challenges were more so team challenges, but yeah, uh, he still gets credit for me. Um, outside of that, then you go down the line with Wes and all those people like that. But no, you got to give CT, Darrell, and uh, Johnny Bananas that credit for being at the top of that list on the, on the women's side. Go ahead. I'm sorry, you want to say something. Well, I was going to say, you know, the other folks who are kind of in that list, because I think I would sit, I would probably have the same top three for the men as, as you. We talked about Jordan. Jordan's in the running there. What I mean, we can, and we can go back really far. What about Landon? Landon was great. Landon didn't have, and the only reason I can say, um, I put the row over Landon. Those would be like, to me, on the same level. But Landon never made the connections, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. that Darrell made. Darrell made connections on both women and men's side. Landon kind of was like, he had Alton. Alton was a good, uh, you know, Mark was a pretty good ally, but Mark turned on him too. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just felt like Landon was like a, a, a like a hired gun, like a mercenary type of guy. He won a lot of team challenges as well. But go ahead. I feel like, I feel like Alton could have done a little bit better if he had continued to play as yep. well. Um, but and then you can throw Derek. I think you could throw Derek up there as well as as one of the one of the best players. Okay, so so now on the women's side, on the women's side, it's tough because the thing about you you, you have to respect 
Carl Maria. I think mm-hmm. she is number one as far as her longevity, as far as what she's done to it, like fight from the bottom. Like Carl Maria was public enemy number one. And everybody, like she, if you remember her first season, she was teamed up with Darrell. She dragged Darrell down. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that takes a certain type of person to do that. But to the point where she became the first woman to win a solo challenge on oh, her yeah. own. Oh yeah. And it wasn't like it was just oh, uh, there was going to be a male winner and a women uh, winner. No, 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 no. She won against everybody. Yep. And and that to me. If that doesn't elevate you to a level uh, above many, I think that is very commendable. To her to beat Zach in a final, like that, that was big. So I definitely got to give Carl number one. I want to put some respect on Camilla. I, I can't, I don't like her as a, you know, for some of the things she said out of her mouth over the years and some of her behaviors, but Camilla, she's a firecracker and she was a hell of a player. You know what I mean? She she go if we can erase the racist things, which we can't. No, we can't. But if you were to like our, how we think about her is clearly now muddled by, by that. And it should be. But before that, she was one of the most entertaining people on this show. And I think because of her actions, though, they've had to pull back on a lot of the stuff like the freedom with the alcohol and yep. all that because she she went she would go psycho. So, OK, so uh, here, here's one because you're you know, you're you're old school guy. You let me get my number three. Number three. Okay, was, yeah, yeah. OK, go ahead. Number three is Evelyn. Okay, that's the one that I wanted to know about. OK, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You can tell you what your thought process. Well, well, Evelyn, if you have to go back to those old school shows to see how great she was and the thing i liked about evelyn is she was so no nonsense and we're not talking about someone who is stacked uh, from a height and and weight perspective like no. laurel this woman was sm- on the smaller end but athletic mentality wise she was a giant she thought of herself as like a, a giant person so I really loved her, but again, she only played in the beginning and then she never played again. And I was hoping to see her in, in all stars, but she didn't even come back for all stars. Well, she, 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 I like Evelyn because she was on the Johnny and Kenny and in their train. And then she got off, you know what I mean? And she was actually one of the only women, like I was going to mention her earlier, who was like, no, I'm not doing what you want. The only reason why I knocked Evelyn down because I didn't like on the Island when she had a chance to like take her game and, and like no Johnny, I'm not putting you in. I'm gonna like I think it was Paula, like and she let the, she left on the boat with them and went and they won it. It was a team final, so she won the final. But I didn't like that she 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 let Johnny and Kenny and them kind of coerce her game. Um, but other than that, it taught her a lesson that she can't trust anybody. And I think. Over years, she got so irritated. And that whole Kenny thing with Tanya and all that, yeah. that's part of the reason why she didn't come back. So when you say, why didn't she She didn't come back because of that? Like, it was a lot of controversy around that. Yeah, I know. That's a solid three. I agree with you. I think Carmaria needs to be number one. Um, I, I, I do... I think Laurel probably plays this correctly in that she doesn't do it every season and she's like taking time away from the show because she probably uh she she would probably go crazy right like Mm -hmm. with her energy but one person who i wanted to uh, make sure that we mentioned even though it is so much of a surprise to me that she is this good at the game who is ashley like i i remember watching ashley on the real world and just uh, like she never came to mind for me as someone who would actually be good on the challenge. And she's quite good. Like she's going to have her inconsistencies because she she can uh, often never keep her, her mouth shut, which makes her a target. But even so, she is a target and she still plays this game pretty well. Much like Camilla, they go in the same boat for me. Very good individual competitors. Very good. But I'm sorry. I just can't. I can't. I can't. She said some things out of her mouth that just oh, rubbed me the wrong way. And yeah, I can't 100%. support her. I can't support her. But hell of an athlete. But she just, I don't I don't see her being like someone that you would be like, I can work with her long term, season after season. So she's not going to, she's going to flame out eventually. You know what I mean? Like people know her game. And if you watch the last few seasons, it's kind of been evident that, yeah, people know her game. Yeah. Okay. So. 
let's talk about uh, this uh, this current season. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read off the names of the vets, and then when I go through the rookies, I I I, I, won't, I, I, I I'm guessing that you're gonna know a lot of these rookies because I literally know one of them. Okay. Um, uh, but so vets, we got Tori, we got Nani, we got Anissa coming back once again. She's she's uh, she's been putting in work lately with all these seasons. <laughs> Uh, we got Ashley. We have Casey, Amanda, who continues to come back, and I, I, I don't know exactly why. Um, Big T, Nelson, Corey, Josh, Kyle, Fessy, CT, Devin, and Nam, who is back. Uh, and and so here are the rookies. So from Survivor, we have uh, Michaela, who I don't know. Very uh, good. Very good. Is she she so you you think she has a a pretty good opportunity in this franchise? Excellent. Michaela is one of my favorite survivors of all time to watch. She was a beast in her first season, and then she came back for an All Star season, and kind of you know she was on the same tribe as Sari. You ever watch you watch Survivor, right? I watched the Survivor. So my my Survivor watching has been so inconsistent. I did watch the last season. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm looking up Michaela just to make sure I know. Okay, I, I do recognize her now. Now that you yeah. said that, she, um, but yeah, I, my, my, it's just so inconsistent. But last the last season we watched it, so I think we're we're back on the Survivor train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Survivor. I mean, um, um, Michaela was on a season with Sandra and Sari, and okay. they both and they both kind of like try to take her under her wing, under their wing, because she has a a bad temper, boy. She can go off the handle. So she's one of those players who will probably be perfect for the challenge. She'll lose, but she'll be entertaining when she do. <laughs> uh, and I know Michelle from Survivor. Uh, so she, I'm actually kind of surprised to see her on yeah. the show. She didn't seem necessarily like a, a challenge uh, type of person, but she's very smart. Um, she won. <laughs> yeah, she won. And and there's uh, there's somebody from actually a couple people from Big Brother Nigeria. Uh, I don't know who these who these folks are. Tatcha and uh, Esther. Um, so it looks like they are trying to, like like you said, sort of internationalize and and group some of the the nations together. We have Survivor Romania, someone named Emmy. We have Survivor Turkey, someone named Berna. We have Priscilla from Love Island. U.S. Do you know Priscilla? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Doesn't sound like she's going to do well. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we also have uh, Tracy from Love Island, Germany. We have uh, Bettina from Paradise Hotel, Sweden. We also have Lauren from Love Island. Do you know Lauren from Love Island? I'm trying to remember. It was a couple Laurens. I I'll have to look at some photos of it, but that would be interesting. Corey from a show called 12 Dates of Christmas. I've never heard of this TV show. Never heard of it. Mm -mm. Uh, Jeremiah from Love Island US. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good, good pick. Good pick. I like that. Tommy Sheenan from Survivor. <laughs> the winner of Survivor. I believe it was uh, Ghost. No, not Ghost Island. It had to have been um, Extension Island or Edge of Extension or one of those seasons because he, he was in a tight final too with Lauren and then kind of like tricked her at the end and got there. They call him a, um, a poor man's West, but <laughs> yeah, but, but he, he, nah, he's no West. Trust me. Okay. Uh, and then after Tommy, we have somebody from, uh, two different shows, Warsaw shore and celeb. Get me out of here. Hungary, a guy <laughs> by the name of Gabo. We have a Big Brother UK and Dancing with the Stars UK person, Huey. Do you know Huey? No clue. All right. And then we have uh, Logan from Survivor Spain. And then I mentioned already my guy Kells from Too Hot to Handle. Yeah. And and then someone from X on the Beach, Double Dutch Belgium, Renan. Hmm. Not familiar. Okay. So my question to you is... <clears throat> By having so many of these international folks, are they trying to uh, syndicate the challenge in all of these different areas? Because I, I like you know, I think I, I named I don't know what I named probably fifteen people. 
I know two, I know three out of the 15. So I can't imagine they're going to focus this show, which is directed at a U.S. audience. They're going to focus a ton on these people unless they want to bring them back years and years and years. But what is the what is the flip side? What is the uh, the pro for having all these folks from international areas? Well, they probably own the, these properties in some type of way, and they probably can utilize those shows on an app or some type of way where they're going to, uh, you know, get some type of money out of. But if you, they've been doing this, you know what I mean? If you look at it started a few years ago with the whole War of the Worlds thing. You got the UK in Spanish. You got people from um, Bear. I mean, um, Bear and all those Georgia. We didn't know none of these people. You know what I mean? You try to get to know new new personalities who bring a different flair, who bring a different fan base. And like you say, you want diversity. You get in diversity. Might not be what you thought the diversity of when you thought about it, but no, this is real diversity. You know, yeah, international diversity. And I think it's good for the game because, like I say, we've gotten so many people. Look at Kyle. You're like, who, who knew Kyle would be such a staple of the franchise? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? He's basically, yeah. everybody think of him as American. He still lives in the UK. You know what I mean? Like, like so, yeah, certain people have clicked. And then you use the people from the other franchises who have athletic background, who have some type of strategic or a look to them that's going to be appealing to the viewer. I think it's, it's only a good thing, honestly. Okay, so we obviously we don't really know what the actual game is because there's so many different swerves that they do uh, w with the game. Uh, they they try and change it up every season, so it's kind of hard to try and predict, um, you know, what what they they could possibly do. So I've like I, I just have some storylines and just some thoughts on uh, on what you think is going to happen. And so my first thought is, <clears throat> of the people who have knocked on the door but have not run through it, mm. An Anissa, Nani, Corey, I think they all have like at least eight challenge appearances, zero wins. I wonder how much of this story is going to be, can Anissa, can Nani, can uh. Corey win? Because that was such a big part of Leroy's uh. story from last year. Do you see either of those three sniffing? Because Corey, I think Corey's been like a top prospect so much to the point that he's too old to be a prospect now. No, he's not a prospect any longer. Corey had his chance. He got to the final. He just couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, I can't I can't feel bad for people who actually get there multiple times and lose. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, they just kept me out or Anissa, oh, I just haven't been able to. You couldn't get it done. <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry, man. I don't feel bad for those people. You, you know, my favorite thing about Anissa is she, like, like if this was her job, if she felt like her job. This is our job. <laughs> but, but if she really felt like, ah, oh, you know, the one thing I'm missing is I need to do this or I need to get in better shape. She's like, I'm just going to come back and not do anything. I'm just going to be Anissa. And because she's a, such a great personality she gets uh, uh you know she gets pretty far but she's never gonna have enough to to win in the end i'm sorry i i i it, it annoys me everybody like oh we want to get anisa a win or oh, we want to get leroy a win i'm sorry if you're not good enough to win you don't deserve to win i'm sorry who wants like like on all stars i know you haven't seen it yet but I'm going to take Anissa to the final so, <laughs> and, and run the risk that she's going to be my partner and a leg and we get dragged down because you wouldn't go get in the gym. You wouldn't go do the things that necessarily get your cardio up. You know you're not supposed to be doing certain things in the offseason and get prepared to go run that final. But you do it year after year after year. I don't want to hear the excuse. Corey has no excuse. You're in perfect shape. Yep. You're a work, work, workout warrior. You just either – don't make the right relationships. You make the wrong calls. You make your, your um, alliance with Nelson so obvious that people like, oh, we got to split them up. Is that a shock? Is that new? You know what I mean? Maybe you need to make some new friends, make some new relationships. I don't root for none of these losers who come back year after year who want this. Oh, I just want to win one for the gift. No, 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 no. Like, you go out there and do the work. You know who's getting close, though, is, is Kyle, too. Kyle, I think, is at six. I like Kyle. But uh, same thing. You had your chances. You wanted to get into this feud with Paulie and keep it going <laughs> over and over. And then this is the thing. This is the thing. These people watch the show. Everybody watches the show and responds on social media. 
you know a lot of the chances that these people are coming back the next season are very high. Why yeah. start trouble? Why yeah. go back and forth and then you know it's going to come back to bite you later? That's the thing people do not think. <laughs> All right. Do you see a team big brother person winning in the near future? And if so, who? Who's our best bet? Ah, uh, yeah, I, I think Casey could win from um, from the woman's side. I think she'll be a, a great winner. Um, I could see Paulie winning if he comes back, and, and because Paulie is well rounded, and I've been watching his brother Cody won Big Brother All Stars last year. Um, I've been watching how he's been moving lately, and if he can really like galvanize the younger people as they come in. And don't let people like Johnny or I don't really see an overbearing presence on this cast. You know, the cast that you read me, if you get the right person who can get in there and like, you know, CT is not the type of person who's going to rally the troops. You know what I mean? He's more of a solo guy who will be a follower more so than a leader. If you can get the right follower from Big Brother who comes in there, Josh is the wrong type of leader. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he'll never win. Never. Mark my words, he he only won Big Brother because they didn't want to vote for the person he was against, which was Paul. He'll never win because his personality is so grating that over time it won't be successful. But no, so those are my two picks. Paulie from the male side from right now, for right now, and Casey. Is Paulie's game better if Carmaria is out of the house? hundred percent. If Paulie can do him and not be attached to the hip, and that's basically for anybody. Yeah. Even if you, what what showmats? I want to say Brad. Maybe Brad pulled it off with his uh his ex wife the first time, but then when he came back with, remember he got with the um the younger girl. Mm -hmm. That was like. Uh, like, what is her name? She hasn't been around in a while. Now she's 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 like Car Car Maria's favorite photo model. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them on Instagram. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But like, like anybody who's in a relationship, eventually, early in the in the series, they let you stick around, like with Robin and Mark and different people like that. But now, if they see you, Leroy and, and Cam was kind of like the exception yeah. because I feel like last year was more of a, you know, oh, this is Leroy's last year. Let's let's try to do good for Leroy. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm baby real too. The whole Black Lives Matter movement really helped them last year. They like, well, we're going to stick together. Well, that's over now. You know yeah. what I mean? They got to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, is Josh ever going to get out of the friend zone? With My him. guy has tried to... Uh, uh, puppy dog romance so many people over the years they do not take him seriously even on the season that i'm currently watching war of the worlds 2 oh like, man oh georgia oh. oh georgia i love georgia and then georgia's like making out with bear right in front of him and telling him like is he ever gonna get out of the friend zone because this dude lives in the friend zone he even tried it with uh amanda like yeah. wow Come yeah. on, oh, man! Well, my best friend, you're yeah, my best friend. Yeah, yeah. No, because I, I don't, I, I don't want to. I think he has like a too much of a feminine edge to him that they don't take him serious. You know what I mean? They take him like he's one of the girls. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. nah, it ain't happening. Okay, so there are some vets on this season who uh, have been back and you know are almost there every every season nowadays. Folks like Kyle, folks like Devin, uh, Ashley. Uh, we talked about Amanda. Um, is there anyone who comes back who you'd rather not see ever again? Um, I don't want to be too harsh, but Anissa, um, Nani. Oh, I love Nani so much. I can't. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Um, oh, you know, I can take Nani. I'm not gonna say never see her again. I want her to take a little break again <laughs> you know it, it, it get i can it can get a bit like uh you, you want to miss her again she left for a little while at one yeah. point and the show kind of got better and then she came back but um <laughs> no i get it that's just but anisa definitely um i think the rest of them kind of have taken their little breaks here and there but i think anisa my number one yeah you know i i don't know if there is uh a, i think for the most part the smart folks know that they shouldn't be on every single season. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so they do a really good job. But I, I'm starting to wonder if uh, if Kyle is is going to be uh, yeah. you know too much. You know, he should probably take a season off and come back because I, I actually like him. I think he's very entertaining and and fun guy. But you know, the the person who is going to do this every season and people are in two years, people are going to be like, dude, I don't want to see you again. Is Fess. I can oh, see Fessy coming back every single year. This is this is his new job. He said it online. I mean, he, he that's why he kind of like kicked up the dirt a little bit for a little controversy. You know what I mean? Like if you can be a polarizing figure, you got a job pre- pretty much for life on in this franchise. Like mm-hmm. a person like uh, a Nelson or a, a Corey, you know, they lovable losers. You know what I mean? At first, Nelson was like a real contender. He yeah. made his first final. Second time he made the final again, like he, he kind of was like a beast. But now he gets so wrapped up in his own thing with the women. And uh, I don't know. But, but. He, I think he's also going to have PTSD from his hall brawl battle with. Fisher. Oh, man, that was rough. That was a rivalry there that was built, so I'm sure they'll pay that off this coming season. But, uh, yeah, I think the format also dictates a lot with this show for oh, me. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, it's almost like uh, this is the fourth time we've seen the Hall Brawl this season. Like, what's the what's going on here? Are we making this up as it goes? I think they kind of, like, know of an advance. Of course, not think. They know an advance. Yeah. Who are the people who are up for elimination? And they're like, oh, this person should could be in. They're getting all the footage. They know who's going in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is a competition that will probably be the most exciting for these two particular people. I think it's smart from a production standpoint. But for me as the viewer, it's not exactly fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um... We talked about people who uh, who we may not want to see, but what about people who have sort of just been in our lives for the last fifteen years? Are uh, do you think Johnny Bananas is retiring? No, he's not retiring. But I can I, I like the break. Take a break. What about Car Maria? Do you believe she's retiring? She's not retiring. Take a break. Same with Wes. Not retiring. Take a break. Okay, because those are the folks, and you know we can we can throw CT in there, who they're like they carry they're, they're almost like our friends, you know. At this yeah. point, <laughs> we've seen mm-hmm. them so much, and when they're not in this season, so bananas, Car Maria West, not in this season. Thankfully, CT is in this season because then I go, oh yeah, at least I have one of my buddies. In, in mm-hmm. here. Um, but it is interesting as, as this evolves, and as you know, especially because I mean may, maybe bananas does have an actual career outside of you know, the challenge, you know, he was doing that TV show. I don't know if he still does that TV show, but the travel show that he was doing, mm-hmm. uh, the, I'm sure the pandemic probably hurt that a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. But he's got a lot of opportunities I've seen lately with interviews and things of that nature. So I'm sure like he he's busy, you know what I mean? But Wes is the real busy one. He has multiple businesses. Like he, he does stocks. He does all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? So he's always traditionally, if you looked at it, he'll take a year or two off. Yeah. Like a full cycle because they do two a year. So he'll do like two years. So that's maybe four seasons. And then the one year he'll do one year, a cycle off and then come like that. So if you mix it up, how can I miss you if you never leave? You right, know what I mean? Right. Exactly. J- Jim Cornette. Um, <laughs> okay. So two more. I have two more questions for you and we'll, we'll wrap this up. Uh, Darrell came back into the fold last year. He's an old school challenger a beast and then he came and played with the the new the new game mm-hmm. are there any super old challenge folks who you mm-hmm. would like to see run with the current crop now with all stars we did get to see some of them and it, it wasn't great seeing some of them but it was nice seeing you know some of the folks who uh, who could still play but I, I i was trying to think of this like I, like my always my my go to is Alton. And then I saw Alton on the All-Stars, and he just looks like a skinny dude now. Yeah, he you know? looks, his frame is off. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Like, he just do cardio all day. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's, like, just doing yoga and like, yeah. running, running six miles every day. Um, Probably um, Abe. I like Abe. Abe, uh, as long as cars are not there. If Abe is there alone, he could be entertaining. I like Abe. He's crazy. Um, another one probably would be, 
like you said, you brought him up earlier. Um, oh man, uh, you know, Frank, 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 yeah, yeah, Frank, Frank would be good. Um, I would like to see uh, maybe a, a, a Rachel. Rachel can come back if they could get Coral to come back. Just for, just bring Coral back for one season. Like she, she's maybe my favorite real world person ever. Hilarious. She was great on the challenge. Like she won like multiple times those earlier challenges. Like the, they they won't consider them the challenge at, you know at large or whatever. But she and then she was dominating, dominating the gauntlet. Like her and uh. Her and Evan, that was Evan's first season. I think Fresh Meat. They, they were like tight, you know what I mean? And and and, and they on Wes's tail hard. I, I love that season. That was probably one of my favorite seasons. That was Kenny's first season. That was Wes's first season. That was Evan's first season. That was like the mark of like the new era, the middle era of the, of the challenge, I want to say. But yeah, so Core will be good. Um, I think we've seen Derek enough. I, I'm good. I'm good on Derek. Um, what about Mark Long? I like Mark. Mark. Mark still always performs well. Like I, I've never had a problem with Mark. I, he retired on his own and came back. Remember that? Like he said, "Yeah, this is it for me." And then he came back again. But so yeah, Mark has a lot of influence in the house. He'd be good to see. I don't know. I mean, if CT can fit in, Mark can fit in. I don't. Right. I don't, right. I don't see any difference there. Um, yeah, I think those will be some good selections. So uh, on the men's side. I, I I would love to see Mark who because you have a story with Mark in that he'd be the oldest dude to ever play, you know, it, with the current crop, and that would that would be his story. And and the you know the rookies would call him old dude all the time, and he'd have to win and shove it up their rear ends. Uh, for the women's side, it's it's who I mentioned earlier, which is Emily. I'd love to see her play with these new folks because. Uh, you know, I still see her. She's still doing her workout stuff, and I forget what her little uh, her her. I think she's she calls herself the meathead hippie or something like that. <laughs> um, but I'd love to see her play with these with this new crop of folks because I I just think she's awesome. I, 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 I that's a great pick. I like that. Okay, so last last question, and this is really not even about the game. It is about the extended universe of the game. I know that Nani and Casey are, are now a couple, according to the Instagram. And Casey even uh, made her Instagram private, so I'm sure she's getting a lot of crap because there was, a, there was a, a, a significant other that may have gotten their feelings hurt in, in that whole thing. Um, but what, like, do you follow the gossip? Do you follow the tea uh, from the challenge that closely? Come on, man. Of course I do. <laughs> okay, so I want some of the best stuff that you've heard coming into this challenge? Oh, uh, I mean, I hate the verse. I, I know everything. You know what I mean? I'm not spoiler averse. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, so yes, I will never yes, spoil. Yes. I, I will never spoil anything on the broadcast for people who, you know, haven't watched anything yet. I haven't seen it, but I get, I know who won the season already. You know oh, what I mean? Man. <laughs> That's how deep I'm in this thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, I know everything. Um, and then even last week, uh, I, I I don't know if we'll ever touch on this again, but they had a re, um, like reality TV boxing matchup. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where different people from Big Brother and the Challenge and everybody was in attendance and just seeing certain people in the crowd who were together. Like, oh, ooh, what are they doing together? You know what I mean? Like, okay, well, who was who was the best one? Well. <laughs> The best one was Nelson and Big T. I like. Wow. Whoa. Also, um, Fessy. Who you think he was there with? Uh, he was with a girl he was trying to be with. Uh, Jordan's ex. What's her name? Tori. 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 Yep. Yep. And, and that you know that was like, oh, we're just friends. And, yeah. You know him and Tori was the, Tori and Jordan that whole debacle. You know what I mean? But come find out, they yeah, they was messing with each other the whole time behind Jordan's back. Oh man, it's it's a lot with that, and that's going to play out. You know, it's going to play out. And Jordan, yeah. Jordan, I, I don't know if Jordan is going to come back to the challenge. I really don't. Like I've heard a rumor that he might be done, man. He, mm. it's too. So we'll see. You know, they always say that. Like Abe said, he wasn't going to come. Remember when Abe and Carl Maria played out on brutal, wow. brutal. So yeah, they, they were into like. 
kinky stuff too, like right in front of everybody. Fighting and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, maybe we can touch on this in the coming weeks, but uh yeah. it's a lot of underground stuff that I, I'm able to uncover through okay. my okay. resources. <laughs> All right, so 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 Larry and I have talked about this. We we don't really have the time to do a timely like weekly recap, but I think we're gonna try and revisit during this season and uh, uh, you know, just have our opinions and our thoughts on how the season is going, and Larry may lead us into into some stuff with his current knowledge that we all don't know. Hmm. Uh, but hey, this was a lot of fun. I love talking about the challenge. It's one of my it's one of my favorite things. You know, I, it, it's a TV show, and it's kind of like an athletic event. It's and it's you know reality TV drama, and sometimes you can't write this stuff as well as as, as they have it in the house. So appreciate you hanging out uh i know you're doing your you, you sort of uh revamped or, or brought back your website stuff and doing your video podcast so let let the people know you know where they can find you that's right i'm back at cautionscreations.com that's my last name c-a-u-s-i-o-n-s creations.com uh, talking you know big brother big brother's like my number one thing ever like that's my favorite reality show so I do pretty much daily coverage there. I'm a, a member of Rob has a podcast. So um, Rob Sestanino, who is a um, contestant on Survivor to Amazon, he has his own podcasting network where he covers everything from Big Brother, Survivor, uh, every reality show you can think of, 90 Day Fiance, I'm kind of big on that. Um, a lot of shows, and um, he has a wrestling one now as well. So they do some wrestling coverage. So I do wrestling um, coverage as well. I'm telling you, Great subscription, you know, in addition to anything else that you're listening to. If you love reality TV, that's the like the number one place to go. Yeah, it, was, it was almost too overwhelming for me. Like I was like, man, I have to give up everything else to really get yeah. the value. There's so much stuff there. And big time. So yeah, but check me out. Anything you need to know, I try to update there. Good times. Also follow me on Twitter, Bro Kosh. All right, man. So thanks again. Thanks, to Larry. He is the guru. He is my reality <laughs> TV guru. Uh, for Larry, I'm Double G. We'll see you when we see you. Peace out.